Today we're talking about operant conditioning, and if you haven't done any study on operant conditioning, there are four four parts to it. There's positive reinforcement, positive punishment, uh, negative reinforcement, and negative punishment. Um, because it takes so long to talk about these things, uh, my last video took me 20 minutes to make and I realized that was just too long, people wouldn't stick with it throughout the entire thing, I've decided to break it up into a four-part series. So today, part one, we're focusing on the positives. So that's going to be positive reinforcement and positive punishment. When we think of positive training, you want to think of uh, you're adding something to the dog, you're giving something to the dog. So what we're going to talk about today, well, we're going to start with positive reinforcement, which is the most common and most well understood by everybody uh, method of training. And that's going to be, I'm going to give you something when you do something proper. For instance, with, uh, with positive reinforcement, it can be a toy, a treat, a uh, release from work, verbal praise, physical praise, that kind of thing. So anything that is exciting and good to the dog. Now what positive reinforcement is good for is for increasing a behavior. It's not good for decreasing a behavior. For instance, if your dog is barking, um, doing a treat reward after he stops barking isn't necessarily going to teach him that barking is bad. Um, but if you get your dog to sit and you give them a treat for that, it will teach them that sitting on command is good. So positive reinforcement is used for increasing a behavior, not decreasing a behavior. So when I'm doing positive reinforcement training, I have a tool to help me. Um, obviously, you could use a pocket or something like that, but I use an old chalk bag. And this, uh, this string keeps it closed or allows it to open, so I can take this on my runs and that sort of thing. And I fill it with, right now it's filled with dog treats uh, and kibble, both. Alright, so the treats I'm using are probably a little bit big for Gracie. Um, she'll have to take a break to chew them, which isn't ideal, but um, she will understand that she's done something good. I'm just going to exhibit real quick some positive reinforcement training. Alright, you ready? Come on, Gracie. Come on. Come on. Yes, good girl. And there's the treat. I think she'll take it. That's a good girl. Yes, good girl. Then we get into positive punishment. Um, positive punishment, remember with positives we're adding something to the dog, we're adding a correction. So that can be a uh, verbal correction, you know, giving them a, a command that says that's bad, no, or bad. Um, that can be a tug on a train collar, that can be a physical touch, um, spatial pressure, e-collar stimulation. So all of those are things that you would uh, give to your dog when they're doing something incorrectly. Now, positive punishment is very good for decreasing a behavior, not increasing a behavior. For instance, if your dog is barking, again, and you give them a stimulation with an e-collar, um, that's going to teach them that barking is bad. But if your dog is sitting after you've asked them to and they stand up and you give a stimulation, that won't necessarily teach them that sitting is good, that'll teach them that standing is bad. So again, uh, positive punishment is for decreasing a behavior, not increasing a behavior, and positive reinforcement is good for increasing a behavior, not decreasing a behavior. Positive punishment, it really depends on the dog. Um, I generally use a training collar when it comes to Hector. I have both a prong collar um, and a choke chain. I don't use the choke chain very often. I don't use the prong collar all that often either. Uh, generally a physical or a verbal command is, is enough for him. Um, for Gracie, because she's so small um, and it's hard to find a training collar that fits her properly, and she does need a fair bit of positive punishment because she's not a highly food motivated dog, um, I just use her own leash. I'll loop it like this, slide it over her head, and I'll keep both ends. That way when we're taking a walk, I have the opportunity to keep a hold of just the collar and not give her a correction, or I have the option of giving a light tug on this, this loop around her neck here, and uh, and it's enough of a correction for her. So she doesn't need much, and I'm not going to, uh, to overwhelm her with this, whereas with a choke collar or something in her size even would probably be overwhelming to her, because the noise would affect her just as much. Down. 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 All the way. Nope. And there I'm going to use positive punishment. Good. Good girl. Yes. And you see that the positive punishment for her was one finger on her back telling her I need this to go down. So again, not much for her. 
Um, because she is so sensitive, I'm going to be very careful about the corrections that I give.